Hello, I'm Jane. I'm glad you're here. And this is 10 things I no longer buy due to low waste living. So I'm really happy that living a low waste lifestyle is slowly becoming more mainstream, but with that comes the sheer number of choice and the number of products and the things that you can swap out and that I understand can make the process seem kind of daunting. So I found it helpful to just compartmentalize the things that you can swap over for a reusable or the things that you can just opt out of buying altogether. For me, realizing that I didn't need these things to begin with sort of happened naturally over time and phasing these products out slowly, I realized that I didn't really miss them. So number one, fast fashion. Now, I, I know this has all been said before, so I don't feel like I need to reiterate or go into a lot of detail about how polluting and wasteful the fast fashion industry is, not to mention the tons upon tons of textiles and fabrics and clothing that wind up in landfills every year. And with the prevalence of services like Depop or Thread Up or Let Go or phew, just about any old thrift store that you can find on every corner store in every small town, you can find pretty much anything under the sun secondhand and for cheaper. I started thrifting when I was a teenager because I thought it made me look really cool. And I also have two sisters and we're the same size, so we just kind of swap clothes around over the years. So I've been able to find everything I've wanted outside of H&M and Zara and Forever 21 and all those big box stores. And I don't think I've sacrificed looking good for being sustainable. Number two, pads and tampons. So every menstruating person will know that panicked 3 a.m. CVS run when they get their period and they realize they don't have any tampons left. And the average menstruating person spends over $5,000 in their lifetime on these products. They don't break down easily in landfills. They can contain bleach. The dyes and colorants and fragrances are not good for your parts. And also, fuck the tampon tax. So swapping over to a menstrual cup or period underwear to me seemed like a no-brainer, despite it taking a few cycles to get used to and phasing out using pads and tampons took some time. My menstrual cup was around $20. I bought it about five years ago. Love her, still going strong, I'll never go back. And I was gifted three pairs of Thinx underwear and I typically use them to sleep in. They're cute, they're really comfortable and I promise it doesn't feel like you're wearing a diaper or anything. I typically just rinse them out and let them air dry and then just toss them in with the rest of my laundry. I may do a whole separate video on low waste period care because I know switching over to reusables when it comes to you know your intimate parts can be kind of a touchy subject. But for me, I felt empowered that my body and my wallet were no longer slaves to these tampon companies. Number three, Ziploc bags. Um, I'll be honest, this was just one of those swaps that I, I just decided I wasn't gonna buy these things anymore and then once I stopped buying them I realized that I didn't really need them to begin with. I have two stasher bags and some beeswax wrap that I just reuse and the need to buy these flimsy plastic bags just sort of became obsolete. So, pretty straightforward. Number four, hairstyling products. Now I'll preface this by saying that I have manageable straight hair. I've never been good at styling it myself and for the longest time I really wanted like a, f a head of just full thick curly hair and I threw all kinds of waxes and pomades and hairsprays at it to try to get my hair to hold a curl and what would you know it never wanted to. So I gave up and I stopped buying these things. So after giving up things like curling products or hairsprays it was just easier to accept my hair the way that it is and to stop using chemicals and waxes to try to change it. I don't own a straightener or curling iron. I just use your typical shampoo and conditioner bars and I'll occasionally brush it out using my roommate's blow dryer. Number five, cling wrap. Cling wrap, saran wrap, whatever you want to call it. It was another one of those things that I just cut out of my life cold turkey and then just realized that I never needed to be buying it to begin with. Like I said, I use beeswax wraps and you can find a lot of other creative ways to keep food fresh, like flipping a bowl over it and sticking it in the fridge or storing your veggies with a little bit of water or things like an onion or an avocado, just flipping it cut side down on a plate and that can let it stay fresher for longer. Number six, bagged bread. 
Now my cottage core is showing a little bit with this one, but a couple years ago I started baking my own bread and despite having absolutely no skills in the kitchen, it actually came out pretty good. So instead of buying the bagged bread from the grocery store, I just spent a couple hours a week baking some for myself, cut it up, keep it in the freezer, it stays fresh, and it's actually really, really good. It tastes better, it's cheaper, it's fun to make, and I feel like a little country cottage witch. Number seven, Q-tips. So I do plan on making the switch to the last object reusable Q-tip, but for the last year or so, I stopped buying those cotton swabs that you get at the drugstore. And instead, I just lightly clean my ears when I'm in the shower. I'll be honest, this subject for some reason kind of grosses me out, so I don't really want to go into a lot of detail, but your ears are self-cleaning anyway. So, number eight. <laughs> Books. I stopped buying books a while ago because I had this habit of reading them once and then just letting them collect dust on my shelf. I know it's enticing to have a full library and of course every secondhand bookshop is just overflowing with secondhand books that you can get for cheap. And I'm not saying stop buying secondhand books, but in my effort to both reduce my carbon footprint and live a minimalist lifestyle, it made more sense to me to donate and sell my books and just get a library card. I'm currently reading Weather by Jenny Offhill, and I would absolutely recommend it. Number nine, takeout. This one was tough for me to give up because living in New York, you're surrounded by all the most amazing food in the world and you can have any kind of food that you want delivered to your door within an hour. And during pandemic times, it's obviously not the best idea to go to a restaurant and sit down at a table and order a meal. But no matter how many times I would ask for my takeout order to be without those plastic cutleries or little plastic bags of things or little packets of stuff. Every time I would order something, it would come to my door with all the extra plastic accoutrements that I had no use for. So I deleted Seamless from my phone and when I do want to eat out at a restaurant, I'll just go there in person with my own container and just ask nicely if they can just, just, th just, throw, just throw it in my own container, just throw it in here. Or ask ahead of time before they make it if they can put it into a cardboard container or some plastic-free alternative. And number 10, drugstore meds. I'll preface this one by saying I do still take vitamins. I take the Ritual multivitamin that comes in a post-consumer plastic bottle, but otherwise I don't buy things like cough syrup or cough medicine or sleep aids or other non-prescription drugs from the drugstore. I would love to explore more natural remedies and supplements like tinctures or teas or, or stuff that I could make myself. Now, I definitely don't mean sacrifice your health and comfort for the sake of making less trash. If your doctor says that you need something or you have pain to manage, by all means, don't just suffer through. Now, I do still take a prescription and it does still generate trash, but for my low waste efforts, I just try to avoid immediately reaching for the plastic bottle of cold syrup or those blister packets of allergy pills when I feel a cold or an illness or something coming on and I just try to find more natural, make at home, low waste remedies for myself. And that's it, that's the list. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Take care of yourself, take care of the earth, and I'll see you later.